I'm delighted to be joined on uh, this week's episode of the Pick of the Flicks podcast by uh, John McPhail. Hi, John. Hey, everybody. How are we doing? Great stuff. And uh, John is the uh, director of the uh, Christmas zombie horror musical Anna and the Apocalypse. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's just it's just one or two genres. Yeah, I think I got all of them in there. I'm not quite sure. Exactly, it's, it's a mouthful, isn't it? A zombie yeah. music at Christmas. Uh, so, for for people who aren't familiar with the film, which uh, is coming out as you listen to this, it's coming out this week. Um, mm-hmm. s- say a little bit about what it's all about. Well, as I just said, it's a it's a zombie musical set at Christmas. You know, like <laughs> what else do you need to know from that? Um, it's a it's a coming of age story about a. A young girl um, who's sort of like who's in this little small town and wants to go sort of go off and explore the world. And uh, her dad is uh, wants her to go to university and wants her to um, go and study. So it's like these sort of teenage problems, and it's her and her friends are just um, coming up to the sort of Christmas show at school in their final year, and then she wakes up the next morning and there's been a zombie apocalypse. Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's a fantastic scene where um, where she wakes up and she uh, doesn't realise the zombie apocalypse has started and she just takes part in a musical number. It's one of those moments like we've all done, which is we're walking to work, we're going to school, we're going to the train, we're going somewhere and there's music in our ears and we're singing along and um, we kind of just get lost in it. Yeah, obviously we've got this sort of this rich history of sort of alternative Christmas movies. Uh, you know, we, we, there's, there's the sort of Christmas horror films. There's the more cynical sort of brand of Christmas movies. Where do you think your film sort of sits in that? Is it is it an anti Christmas movie with big big inverted commas, or is it something more sort of more feel good and more festive than that? Well, I, th- I think it's I think it's a bit of both, which is a little bit, which is a little bit like you know it's a little bit strange to sort of say. But like when I did set out to make this film, I wanted to make this film this generation's Gremlins. This is the 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 film um, that you do put on. It's like you put on with along with Scrooge and uh, Gremlins and Die Hard and Krampus. You know when you you know because we all love like a Muppets Christmas Carol and we all love um, watching It's a Wonderful Life at Christmas, but sometimes it's just ha- having that something bit different. Um, but at the same time, like people do come out of this and they say, I feel so joyous and so happy and so wonderful um, coming out of uh, seeing this film. So um, it seems to be ticking sort of both boxes there. Yeah, that's certainly how I felt about it. I'm I'm a, I'm a big horror fan, but I'm also a big fan of musicals, and I'm a big fan of unashamedly like cheery Christmas stuff. And I think this scratched all of those itches for me, really. Um, but I, mean... I also wanted to talk very briefly about about the the amazing cast. You've got obviously all all of the teenage cast, but then it's good to get some 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 big meaty roles for um for some British actors that you don't really see get sort of stuff like this. Like I'm, I'm thinking of sort of Mark Benton, who I've always appreciated, and and Paul Kay as well gets a great great role. Well, well, with Mark Benton, Mark is like instantly recognisable as one of those big, lovable guys. He's one of those big, you know, he's, he's he, you instantly take to him. Do you know what I mean? You, 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 you know, he is uh, a big fun, and he's he's a fun character. And he's a, he usually gets the funny roles and the comedy roles, and in this he kind of plays, you know, a bit more of a straight man. But you know, you can instantly identify with him. You know him. You feel, you know, he is that British dad that you know, um, and he just. You know, it, it was you know so it just it just made everything so much easier, um, and um, you know I, I in fact I'd worked with Mark Benton. Um, I worked with Mark uh, uh, on Waterloo Road um, when I was a camera assistant. I used to drop marks for him. I used to drop marks for Mark. Um, uh, and in fact, I, moved, I, I, I met him the day he was moving into his flat. I'd done like I'd made his bed and made all the sort of like welcome pack and all that for him arriving for his first stint on Waterloo Road up in um, Greenock. Um, so it was nice to actually be be working with him as a director this time, um, and of course Paul Kay's is just amazing. Paul Paul's wonderful, and he really threw himself into that role, threw himself into it, and you know I wanted to give him as much freedom as possible, and he had he had so much control over like his cat like um, how his character looked and things like that, you know, um, and uh, he did just he got right into the role. And even when we were shooting, he was just, he was constantly thinking, constantly trying things and wanting to try things and, and throwing out little lines and little quips and stuff like that. Um, that line, it's one of my favourite lines in the film where like him and Mark are facing off at the end, uh, facing off and he, you, know, it's, you, you know it's the line I'm talking about. And yeah, 
um, I just love it. Yeah, no, it's great. But you said Paul wanted to try things. He certainly tries things in this performance, and it's oh, it's, I, I, it's a joy to watch. It really is. It's it's great because he he just comes across like a maniac, you know. Yes, <laughs> he really it's, does. It's absolutely brilliant. It's that he's that perfect like British villain, you know. The, 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 he's big and bold, and you dislike him, but at the same time, there's this something that's kind of like kind of you know badass about him, you know. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people will recognise something in that of that every school seems to have one teacher who seems slightly too yeah. ambitious and a little bit like they might be a psychopath underneath it all. Well, well Paul had said he had this teacher and he, he really disliked him. He really hated him. He said he, he was like this stick insect of a guy and he was just horrible and smarmy and he was he was trying to channel a lot of that in Savage. Um, so, you know, and, and you're completely right. We all went to school with somebody who you were just like, like you just couldn't stand being in their class. 